All right, so look at this, guys. I, I think we did a pretty good job. I mean, look at that beautiful smoke ring there on the outside. It's super tender, super juicy. You can see all that juice, all that fat kind of rendered down. Hey everyone, it's Ryan with Gilbert Fireplaces and Barbecues. And today, we're doing brisket on the Yoder Smokers YS640 Pelican. All right guys, so we're doing brisket. We are in my backyard today, which is the best place to smoke brisket. It's gonna take a while, guys. You know, it's, it's the one piece of meat that all barbecue is judged on, separates good barbecue from bad. Um, it doesn't need to be intimidating, all right? As long as you got some time, you know, hang out with family and friends, crack some beers. Um, that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna put together an awesome brisket today. I can't wait to show you how we do it. Let's get going. All right, guys, so like I said, today we're gonna be smoking this brisket on the Yoder Smokers YS640 pellet grill. Let's talk about pellets for a second. So there's a lot of different options out there when it comes to pellets and just smoking wood in general. Um, for me today, I'm gonna be using Lumberjack's Competition Blend Pellet. It's an oak hickory cherry blend, uh, which I really like. Oak is gonna burn uh, real nice, give you a, a good heat, good smoke flavor, breaks down kind of slowly. Um, the hickory wood's gonna be a little sharper in flavor, so that's gonna give it a little bit of kick. Cherry just kind of gives it a beautiful mahogany color when it's all done, so I love cherry for color purposes and aroma, it's fantastic. Um, there's a lot of different pellet companies out there, a lot of different people that do them. What I like about the Lumberjack in particular is these guys will they'll burn really clean. There's not a bunch of fillers in them, it's all natural ingredients. They don't leave a lot of ash behind, which is really nice for when you're um, cleaning up the cooker afterwards. It just makes it a lot easier. Um, so we really like these here. So today, this is a 20 pound bag. Um, this cook, I figure, is gonna take us at least 12 hours. Um, I'm gonna load up essentially the whole bag in the hopper here. Um, so that's gonna be our first step. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is power on the smoker. Just hit the on switch there. And then from there, you could hear that fan start initiating. All right, so we're gonna start it at 250 degrees. This brisket's gonna take a long time. 250's where we're gonna wanna start. We're gonna probably change things as we go along. We're gonna start at 250 for now. We'll go from there. All right, here we go. Here's the brisket here. So what we got here is about a 12 pound brisket. Uh, to be honest with you, this is one of the smallest ones I've done. So this is gonna be a bit of a learning experience for me too, which is awesome. So we're kind of experiencing this together here. Uh, typically, when you're at the grocery store, you're gonna find brisket in the 17 to 20 pound range. Um, what you're gonna wanna do is, is trim it up. And, and here's the reason why. Uh, you know, you may be thinking, you know, I got this awesome piece of meat, all this fat's gonna produce all this flavor. Why would you trim any of that off? It's a good question. The problem is a lot of the fat that's on the brisket is super hard fat that is not gonna render down and it's just gonna leave the brisket super fatty and just not very tasty when you're done uh, cooking it. So we're putting a lot of time and effort into this. So let's, let's make it right. All right, so I'm gonna kind of walk you through some of the things you want to uh, want to cut out of these briskets when you're trimming them to help that kind of render down and give you the best results. All right, guys, so let's talk this brisket here. So uh, this is a full packer brisket, which is basically made up of two muscles. You have your point and you have your flat. So your flat part is gonna be kind of where all your, uh, your slices come from. It's right here. Um, your point's gonna be that thicker, kind of fattier area. It's what, uh, what the burn ends are typically made from. Uh, it's gonna have a little bit more flavor, a little bit more moisture because of the fat content. Um, so you have the two muscle groups here that kind of make up the full brisket. So we're gonna start trimming away some of that fat. Some of these loose ends, like you got this guy here, you just wanna get rid of that because that's really just going to, uh, to burn off and really not give you much. So we'll just cut that off right from the start. Where you wanna really start with these is, is on the end. So we're gonna start here. You'll notice that it's a little bit discolored on the ends where the butcher made the cut. Um, that's where they kind of are separating the muscle there. That's kind of gross. That's really not gonna take any smoke or any seasoning. So what we're gonna do there is we're gonna just take our knife and we're gonna cut and you wanna kind of follow the uh, pattern and the direction of the brisket itself when you make this cut. So I like using a, a curved boning knife like this here. So we're gonna kind of start, start from this end. The next thing we're gonna do is kind of just square off this end here. So you can see how it kind of comes down like this. Um, we want that to cook kind of even. So we're gonna make one more cut. We're not going to take a ton off. All 
All right, so there's a spot here up on the point that's super, super hard fat that's not gonna render down. You're gonna wanna cut that out because that's just gonna produce nothing in flavor to the brisket here. Another little tip for you is when you're trimming a brisket, the best brisket to trim is a cold brisket. As soon as it starts to heat up a little bit, that fat really starts to soften and, and, and it makes it really tough for your blade to get through it. So a cold brisket's the best brisket to trim. So we're gonna trim this hard kind of deckle piece out uh, here next. I mean, look at all that just solid solid fat. All right, so we made our main cuts. The next thing you want to do is go across the fat cap here and uh, kind of just give yourself a nice uh, kind of clean, fresh surface for your, uh, your seasoning. So you just kind of go across. Like I said, a curved boning knife is a great knife to use for this. All right, guys, so we kind of trimmed that up. You can see there's a lot that we trimmed off of there. So like I said, this was about a 12 pound brisket. We probably got a good pound and a half of, uh, of meat, maybe even a little bit more that we trimmed off here. So that's gonna help reduce our cook time a little bit. There's really no rules when it comes to brisket. I mean, ideally your brisket's done in 12 hours. That's kind of the goal, um, but you just kind of got to monitor it and, uh, and kind of just take it as, as it comes. So uh, what we're gonna do now, I like the way that this is trimmed up. I think this is good. I think we got some good fat that's gonna render down here. Um, next thing we're gonna do is season this. There's a lot of different ways you could season brisket. Um, for me, I think you're, you're buying an expensive piece of meat. It's a large piece of meat and you don't want to mask the flavor of the meat. You're putting a lot of work into this. You're controlling your temperature with your smoker. You select the wood that you want to use. You have flavors that you want to come through. Last thing you want to do is use a rub that just kind of erases all the hard work that you put into it. So for me, I like the Central Texas style way of doing brisket, and that's really just salt and pepper and smoke. So let's get into seasoning this thing. I think it's ready to go. All right, guys, so like I said, we're going to use salt and pepper today. Um, so we have uh, some thick kind of coarse kosher salt here. Um, it's a nice thicker salt that's going to help with some of the bark formation. You can use like a fine table salt if you want. I just find that if you use a thicker, coarser salt, it really helps give you that nice bark that you want on this, um, on the brisket. And so the other thing too is you want to use like a 16 mesh black pepper. You want the pepper size to be kind of symmetrical with the uh, the size of the salt here. That way when you mix it together, you're not getting you know more of one um, salt or pepper. So I have equal parts here. So I have my shaker. I'm gonna pour, you know what? I'm gonna pour the salt in first. All right. So there's our salt. Let's see how we did here. Should have pretty close to the same amount of pepper in here as well. Put our lid on here. Shake this up. So the first thing we're going to do before we lay our seasoning on is you want to use a binder. Now you could use really anything. All we're wanting to do is form some sort of moisture on the brisket so we have our seasoning that can kind of adhere to it. It's basically a glue. So I got olive oil today. Um, I'm going to season this side first um, because this is the side that we're going to put down on the smoker. So if the seasoning gets kind of messed up, you know, not too worried about it when you, uh, when you present it. Presentation is key on this. You want this to look good after you put all the work in. So I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit of olive oil on here. Doesn't take much. You just wanna get the, uh, the surface wet for the salt and pepper to stick to it. All right, so I like kind of starting left to right. So I'm gonna bring this end up here and do a nice little dusting of our seasoning on that end. And then start making your way across. Okay, so this, uh, this seasoning here is, uh, is definitely secure to this side. So when you flip this, what you're gonna wanna do, you don't wanna disrupt a lot of that seasoning. So I like to grab the end here with one hand, just kinda go down like that. That's not gonna rub it across the table and lose a lot of that seasoning we, were, we worked hard to get. So now we're gonna take our olive oil on this side, just a little bit, and repeat what we just did. All right, so this brisket is seasoned up perfectly. We have our smoker set at 250 degrees. I'm hungry. It's about 9 a.m. right now. So like I said, we're gonna go about 12 hours. We're gonna throw this on for about three hours and then we're gonna check it. You can learn a lot after that first three hours of cooking just to see if you need to raise the temperature, lower the temperature, see where it's drying out. So, uh, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna throw this baby on, we're gonna check back on it in three hours. All right, so we have our brisket seasoned up. We're ready to get it on the smoker. The first thing you're gonna wanna do though, is get a water pan. It's gonna add some moisture. It's really gonna help to prevent that brisket from drying out. So we got our water pan here, just gonna put it down on the bottom part of the smoker. We're gonna use the top rack for the brisket today. All right, so we're three hours into our cook. This is where I like to kind of see how things are coming along. And I like to spritz with apple cider vinegar. So let's check it out. 
Oh yeah, looking good. Getting some good color formation already. We're not really rendering any fat down at this point, um, but it's it's coming along nice. I mean, everything is, uh, is looking great. Um, it's a little dry in this corner here. I was mentioning how on the right side of this cooker, it is the hot spot. Um, so I have my spray bottle of apple cider vinegar. You could use water, um, you know, really any liquid. We just want to make sure that, uh, that it doesn't get too overdone in, in certain spots and dry out. So I got my spray bottle here um, with some apple cider vinegar. So I'm just going to kind of hit, hit that section there, kind of hit around the edge. This has come along nice. We're going to check back on this in about another hour or so. All right, guys, so we're six hours into our cook, so we're about halfway, I would think, here. I've been spritzing it uh, for the last couple hours. Let's take a look right now and see how it's looking. Yeah, it's coming along beautifully. I'm just gonna hit the corners here a little bit with our vinegar, hit the top there. At this point, it's looking pretty good. Um, we're gonna check your water pan at this point too. Our water's getting a little bit low, so I'm probably gonna fill that up here in a second. Um, you wanna make sure that you always have good moisture in there, especially here in the desert. We're in Arizona, super dry. It's nice to add moisture to that brisket. Um, but we're riding pretty good right now. I'm thinking in another two hours or so, we'll be at the point where we're gonna to wanna to wrap it. And we'll get into that discussion about wrapping the brisket here in a little bit. But one of the things that has really benefited us today is using the Yoder YS 640 pellet grill. Um, because it's been a cold day today. It's been unseasonably cold. It's been breezy, and it's been rainy, and we've been dealing with elements. And when you're dealing with elements during a smoke, especially a long smoke, it's great to have a unit that is really just gonna self-regulate itself in terms of temperature. Um, if you're using an offset stick smoker, to do a brisket, a day like today is challenging. You're dealing with the different temperature changes. You're dealing with the wind. It's hard to keep a consistent temperature with wood um, on a day like today. Using the pellets, we've been lucky. I mean, this thing has been riding 250 degrees this entire six hour time frame, um, even with the varying temperature changes here today, this afternoon. So we're doing really well. The Yoder smokers are absolutely fantastic. They're all manufactured in Wichita, Kansas, all 10 gauge steel, USA made. They get up over 600 degrees and then they get down under 160 degrees. So there's a lot of versatility to these guys here and we're seeing some of the beauty of it today um, with how it's held up with our, with our weather. Um, the other thing too is that Yoder has come out with a new model. We're cooking on a second generation Yoder. They have their S series out now that does have a different controller. It's got Wi-Fi capabilities, Bluetooth, um, control it all from your uh, iPhone or tablet, which is great. There's temperature probes built into it. Um, this is, like I said, second generation, so we're not dealing with all that technology, but we're still doing okay with it. Um, they're fantastic units, though. Absolutely love Yoder, Yoder smokers. If you guys want some more information, check out our, uh, our store. We have uh, plenty of these in stock. It's a great product. Okay, so I wanna touch on the temperature really quickly here. So we've been rocking our smoker at 250 degrees, and that's a great temperature, regardless of the size of the brisket. Uh, we have about nine and a half pounds. It was about 11 and a half pound brisket when we got it. We trimmed it up, about two pounds of fat came off of it before we threw it on the smoker. So, you know, 250 is a good temperature and cooking time really just depends on the size of the brisket. So at nine pounds, you know, we should be in that 10 to 12 hour cook time frame with that. Um, when you get up to your larger briskets, of course, that could be extended. Um, but just plan on in that 10 to 12 hour range, at least 12 hours for most briskets. Like I said, this is actually the smallest brisket I've ever cooked. So we might come in under that 12 hour time frame. It's all kind of just a guessing game, really. We'll see where we're at. You know, we'll go through the process. But, uh, you know, don't set any parameters for yourself in terms of when it needs to be done because you'll never get your brisket done when you think it should be done. It's each cook is its own unique experience and we're kind of dealing with that here today. So we'll see where we end, end up, but I'm feeling good about it. I think we'll be right around that 10 to 12 hour time frame. Okay guys, so we are about nine and a half hours in with our cook and we've been spritzing every hour here since the three hour mark. So we've been making sure that we've been staying on top of this brisket. Um, Let's see what it's looking at right now. I think we're at the point where we should have to wrap it, um, but I wanna check it out and, and see what that bark is looking like here and see how that fat's rendering. So let's see what we got. Huh. Okay. 
You know what? So, so one of the things I did was about an hour ago, um, I actually rotated the brisket on here. As I mentioned earlier on the Yoder smokers, there is a bit of a hot spot in the upper right corner. So we had our point in that, in that uh, spot on the grill. So I rotated it because this was starting to get, you know, a nice color to it. Wanted to kind of even it out. But even after evening it out, gosh, we're nine and a half hours in. I don't do this often, guys, but I think we're gonna just let this ride. I, I, I don't think I wanna wrap this. I want this to form a little bit more of a bark here. Um, that's one of the things cooking on a pellet smoker. You don't quite get the intensity of the smoke that you get on offset stick smokers. This may be an unpopular uh, opinion, but I'm not gonna do it on this cook. Like I said, this is a smaller brisket. It's just one of the smaller ones I've ever smoked. and. I just think at this point in time, to wrap it would be doing it a disservice. So I will still show you the wrapping process. When this is done, I'm gonna let this go because this has probably got another hour and a half to two hours to go. But when this is done, I will wrap it in the butcher paper and we'll let it rest in that paper so it helps to reabsorb a lot of the juices and the moisture that leaks out of it. Um, so you'll get to see that process. But you know what, guys? I don't typically do this. I think on this one, I'm just gonna let it ride. And that's part of brisket. Each one is different. You never know what it's gonna give you. So. Sometimes you just gotta follow your gut. I'm following my gut on this one. We're gonna leave it unwrapped. We'll see you in a couple hours. All right, so here we are. We are at hour 12. It is 9 p.m. at night. We got this brisket on at 9 a.m. this morning. It was about nine and a half, 10 pounds when we got it on. We've been monitoring it all day long. We've been spritzing it with our apple cider vinegar. We've been checking the bark formation. We've been doing everything we're supposed to do. We're at hour 12. I'm ready to eat brisket. I hope this thing's done. Let's check it out. Oh, yes. That is looking and smelling fantastic. I'm gonna see where we're at. So at this point, so it's been on the smoker for 12 hours. We got some good bark formation here. We wanna kind of just probe for tenderness. We wanna make sure it's nice and tender. We don't want there to be much resistance. How I like to do it is I use my temperature gauge here at this point, we're not really testing the temperature so much as the tenderness of the meat. So I'm gonna take my probe and I'm gonna put it into the brisket and oh my goodness, it is sliding in like butter. There's hardly any resistance at all throughout this entire brisket. Let's just see where we're at temperature wise. So here we are in the point, about 197 degrees. And we're down here in the flat at about 206 and there's zero resistance there. Guys, we've put in a lot of work today. I think it's time for this thing to come off. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it off, we're gonna wrap it in our butcher paper, which we did not do while it was still on the smoker. We're gonna wrap it in the butcher paper, we're gonna let it rest for about 40, 45 minutes. All right, let's take this thing off. I'm just gonna use a towel to grab it. It's obviously gonna be very hot. So let's wrap this thing up. We're gonna rest it in our butcher paper. So we're gonna bring this front piece over here. Gonna fold it in from the side. Down. Fold this in here. We wanna get this tight. We want it to be really nice and tight to collect a lot of that moisture. Down here. And then over. All right, and this baby's wrapped. So at this point now, the biggest thing, we've been working all day to make this delicious brisket. The last thing you wanna do is take this brisket off the smoker and just cut right into it. It's not what you do. You wanna let all those juices redistribute throughout this piece of meat. What's happening now is it's super tense because it's hot. As it rests, those, those muscle fibers are gonna loosen up and those juices are gonna redistribute throughout the meat we're gonna be able to get nice, beautiful, juicy cuts throughout the whole brisket. So we wanna, we wanna eat this. We've been working hard all day, but let's let it rest. I'm gonna give this about 40 minutes or so. It's still gonna come up to temp a little bit more. It's a little cool out tonight, so I'm gonna take my towel that I used to take the brisket off, just kinda of place it over there to help insulate it a little bit. We'll come back, check this out in about 40 minutes or so. 
can't wait. All right, guys, so we have smoked our brisket for 12 hours. It's now currently resting, allowing those juices to redistribute before we cut into it. One of the things we're gonna do is we're gonna cut into this and we're gonna do our slices. It's gonna be great. But we are gonna separate the point from the flat and we are gonna make burnt ends using the point. Now, for those who are not familiar, burnt ends are just an absolute staple when you're doing brisket. They're basically cubed up brisket points that become meat candy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cube up that point, we're gonna dredge it in delicious barbecue sauce, and we're actually gonna throw it back on the smoker. But before we do that, we're gonna set the smoker from our 250 degree temp up to about 300 degrees. So let me take my temperature, you're gonna hit the controller here, and we're gonna go all the way up to 300 degrees and get this ready. Basically what we're gonna do, like I said, cube them up, throw them in a pan, throw them on the smoker for another 20, 25 minutes or so, it's gonna be delicious meat candy. I'll show you how it's done here in a minute. Okay, so here we are. Our brisket's been resting for 45 minutes. It's been a long day. I am so excited to cut into this. It smells amazing. Let's do it. All right, so let's cut this up. So we're gonna cut our flat into our nice uh, number two pencil slices. That's the thickness you wanna cut. It's about a quarter inch thick. So I'm gonna take this little end piece off and we're gonna cut that off. And that's just gonna be butter. Look at that, that's beautiful. Just kinda let the knife do the work. There's not a lot to do there. Okay, so we've cut our flat. Now we're at the point here. This is where the burn ends come from. This is the best part of the brisket. I'm gonna cube this up. We're gonna throw some sauce on it. This is going back on the smoker for about 20, 25 minutes. It's gonna be meat candy. It's beautiful. Can't wait to show it to you. Now when you cut this brisket, it's very important that you cut against the grain of the meat. It's gonna make it a lot more tender. We didn't work 12 hours to, uh, to cut this brisket wrong and make it kind of just feel tough in your mouth. And cutting against the grain really helps to uh, protect against that. All right, so look at this, guys. I, I think we did a pretty good job. I mean, look at that beautiful smoke ring there on the outside. It's super tender, super juicy. You can see all that juice, all that fat kind of rendered down. Just a beautiful, beautiful cut there. You know, it definitely, it definitely passes that hang test. It just pulls apart with very little resistance. Melts in your mouth. You know what, guys? We took a risk by not wrapping this, and I think it paid off. We got some good bark formation on this. It was super tender. It's so delicious. I'm really happy that we did what we did. I think I think it was the right call not wrapping it. I mean, sometimes you just gotta follow your gut on this, but uh, this came out incredibly juicy, incredibly tender. I'm stoked about it. I'm, I'm smiling ear to ear because this is that good. I love it. So now what we're gonna do is we have our point. It's this end here, super fatty. Look at all the juices in that. That's just oozing out there, it's beautiful. You got that nice smoke ring there. We're gonna cube this up, throw this on the grill, throw some sauce on there and make our burnt ends. All right, so I'm cubing up our point here for our burnt ends. Just wanna make some cubes out of this here. It's kinda challenging because it's so tender. Just gotta kinda be careful. I'm trying to cut up these burn ends, but this is so good. We got our old mule smoked chipotle barbecue sauce. I'm gonna drizzle that over these. Oh yeah. Toss these up. All right. Just gonna slide these babies right here. We'll check back in about 20 minutes. All right, so we have our flat all sliced up. We have the point sliced up. We also have the burn ends that are now done. Let's check them out. All 
right. Got our burnt end, look at that. Oh, it's just oozing flavor right there. Cannot wait to try this. Let's do it. We knocked it out of the park. Those are incredible. It's my favorite part of the brisket right there. And we absolutely nailed it. So sweet. That sauce has a little bit of spice to it as well. Just tacks up so nice on that brisket. You gotta try this, guys. Unbelievable. Guys, we did it. We finished an epic 13 hour day today. This brisket went on at 9 a.m. this morning. It is now almost 11 o'clock at night, and we made a fabulous, fabulous feast out of this brisket today. The burn ends were unbelievable. Everything came out great. We took the risk by not wrapping it. It was unbelievable. Thank you so much for joining me in my own backyard. Guys, this is not a test kitchen. I am not a pit master by any means necessary. I just like to smoke awesome food, do barbecue in my backyard, have people over, just enjoy my family, my friends, and eat delicious barbecue. I hope you guys will take this recipe and do the exact same thing. As you saw, we, this all came together in a 12 hour period. We had a couple beers, shared some laughs, we dealt with some weather today, but everything came together so nice on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. This brisket was phenomenal. Thank you so much for joining me. If you liked that video, hit that like button, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Instagram and Facebook for more barbecue tips and tricks. This is Ryan with Gilbert Fireplaces and Barbecues, where indoor comfort meets outdoor entertaining.